During the Cold War, what we were all worried about was the possibility of global thermonuclear war. The United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a global struggle, and they had thousands of nuclear weapons poised for immediate launch. But what we're worried about now is the spread of nuclear weapons to additional states and the really dangerous possibility that nuclear weapons might fall into the hands of terrorists. And we have seen repeatedly real cases where highly enriched uranium or plutonium, the two materials you could use to make a nuclear bomb, have actually gotten stolen. So we know that terrorists are trying to get it. We know this material is actually getting stolen. And the consequences would be so immense if terrorists actually got a nuclear bomb that it's worth doing everything we can to reduce that probability. There are more than 30 countries that have a significant quantity of fissile material, either highly enriched uranium or plutonium or both. And what I would like to see is a concerted international effort uh, to control this material first and then to begin to eliminate it. A key element that's really missing from global efforts to secure vulnerable nuclear materials is that there is no global consensus on what matters and how much. And specifically, what matters for material security? What steps should states be taking to ensure that weapons usable materials are appropriately secured? And then also, what are the priorities amongst those? The NTI Nuclear Materials Security Index provides a range of recommendations of what countries can do collectively and individually to secure weapons usable nuclear materials. We have assessed 176 countries on how well they do for nuclear material security. I think there are a variety of things you can do in the way of threat briefings, working together with countries to do joint threat assessments, convincing countries to do realistic tests of how well their security system actually performs. There's a variety of things like that that I think in the U.S. case have helped undermine complacency and, and led to change over the years, and that I think might help in other countries as well. One idea that we have been considering is developing a norm against the continued uh, acceptance of uh, fissile material for any purpose. You don't need to fuel nuclear power reactors with fissile material. If we could accomplish that, along with the agreement that we're not going to produce more nuclear weapons, then we'd be able to say we have no need for any fissile material. This is a simple concept, uh, fissile material zero. Uh, it would require a lot of work in the international community, but our initial look at this as either a moratorium or a ban uh, tells us that it's worth uh, thinking further about. The Seoul Nuclear Security Summit is coming up at the end of March of 2012, two years after the first one. What the Nuclear Security Summit process has done is given a sort of a new tool to raise the discussion to a higher political level and overcome some of the barriers and obstacles. We need to seize that moment uh, while this nuclear security summit process is going on to really get some major commitments locked down. What I'm hopeful to see is some even more specific commitments on clearer standards for how secure nuclear material and nuclear weapons have to be no matter where they are in the world. At the end of the day, we want to have less rather than more material, and we want the material that's there to be fully secured, and we want there to be no additional material produced. Those are the kinds of things we're aiming to do.